smart and sassy. And, but she was still a teenager with all her angst and, you know, and the issues <coughs> and things like that. And so, the complexity, too. And right. also that her, you know, her boyfriend was also, both her boyfriends. I but know. Love that, 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 too. That he, <laughs> you know, what was, not, what was interesting is when we filmed the uh, shows, the film, and you think about it, at that time, it was all about the kind of gangster black guys, like I was saying, boys in the hood, straight out of Brooklyn, and all that. So when I screened the film, I went to a, a small community, I tried to screen the film at community organizations, and there were some tough brothers sitting back, young brothers, and I was like, they were like, like this and everything. So when the, air, when the film ended, they got up and applauded. And I said, why? And they said, because you, we, this is the first time we really saw ourselves as a hero. Like a contemporary film that he saved the baby, <laughs> you know. And he wasn't a drug dealer. He just right worked hard for a car. And so he was on the. We never see the car. And I also wanted to show, like with that film, that you know, his mother is supposed to be the backstory, like a principal, and he has money, and she lives in the project, and that happens in our community. The different class distinction. Right. So, but when you were writing the film, um, were you conscious of this stereotype of a teen, teenage, a teenager who was pregnant, and um, did you get flack for the teen pregnancy? And you can talk a little bit about that. Um, okay, see, my journey with Chantel was different, because again, it was Tracy who sort of introduced me to the whole um, aspect of it. So I, I came in through a different gaze, which I think was best for me, um, because I got to, I, I, I was Catholic first as an intent. So then the, she's been with this project for years, you know, so by the time I got there, I got to see a different aspect of the film through Nintet's eyes first. So I, it never even dawned on me as being stereotypical because I got to, I got to play another texture. And by the time that Leslie was like, please, would you, um, let's try this differently. And so doing it through Chantel's eyes, it was more of like an extension of a different depiction. So um, people having sex, you know, so it's, you know, people are, you know, and I was sitting there like, oh, I didn't realize, oh, she had sex with, you know, this, this sexual activity that, you know, teenagers are doing. It didn't, to me, at all seem foreign in regards to the reality of it, you know, or the reality of not knowing how to deal with it, not knowing how to talk about it, not knowing that a soda bottle is not the way to go, <laughs> you know? These are, these are, and not knowing your options, even being smart and being blocked, if you noticed, um, the process of what she was doing. And back that time, it just wasn't, uh, sexual education wasn't a thing to, that was so prevalent. That wasn't something that was done. So I didn't think of it in regards to a stereotype. I thought um, it spoke a lot to socially what was going on, which is still going on, you know, except now we have safe surrender, which you don't have to throw your babies out, you know. Please God, you can take your baby to a police station or a hospital if you can't handle it. So there was some, like some serious issues that if you go beyond, you know, the things that you go, oh, and embrace the whole thing. You get to see holistically what it was about. And I think even to this day, I get people that stop me or they, they email me on my website. And, you know, I showed this film to my, my teenagers. And, you know, we did this sex education, you know, and it's, it's so instrumental in having the conversation, which was not being said. In the night, it was not. No one's talking about sex. No one's talking about, well, how, you know, options on abortion or anything like that. No one's talking about, okay, the reality is I hid the pregnancy. How many times have we now seen these papers of, you know, they hid the, hid the baby. There's a TV show, I think. There's a lot of I was pregnant, didn't that. know it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, like, seriously? Oh, my gosh. And so, this was really one of the films that came before, like, Juno or Knocked Up or a lot of those other films. And... You know, that's just something to, you know, sometimes I think our stories are forgotten. You know, there was an article done about teen pregnancy and teen films, and they mentioned Juno, knocked up. They didn't mention Dustin Lester on the IRT. And I was wondering, is that because she was a woman of color? 
you know, so we have to, that's what I'm saying is that sometimes we have to look beyond the articles, look beyond um, just going to a movie, seeing who's behind the movie, who is writing the movie, are there women writing the movie? I mean, it's, it's also, too, the fact of, uh, I look at, like, Catherine Bigelow, who, you know, won the award for Best Director, but she was the first female who won for Best Director. So there's a lot of evolution that has to go on <laughs> in making the entertainment industry more inclusive for us, and also our stories, that they're more complex. I mean, we have had a lot of movies, which is good, in terms of comedies and sex comedies, and you know, we were kind of kind of like inundated with that in the mm -hmm. last ten years, five years. But you know, now it's I think time for us to move on another level and see different types of stories that need to be told. So Harry, on your daughter Kiana would be about. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Leslie did not tell me her name. <laughs> I thought it was Imani because no, I guess Mother. that's the other thing. Yes. Right, really because I that was the um, I said that line right. That's I said, Kiana. I said, who is that? I was like, no, my kid's yes. name is Crazy Man Louise. What are you talking about? <laughs> yes, so Kiana. Yes. Well, can I do one little yes, thing? Please. I actually wanted to, and my it was kind of uh, you kind of gave it away a bit. <laughs> I was going to ask who had seen the film for the first time. Okay. Oh, bless your heart. And I wanted to give away a little bit of memorabilia, but you have to kind of answer a question. Oh, <laughs> but in, you know, my next film is called I Love Cinema, and it comes from I Told You My Love for Cinema, and it's about a woman who's a college professor. She's obsessed with cinema. Um, she's a PhD, first year college professor professor and she is obsessed with cinema both in the classroom and in the bedroom mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and but what happens is she's a professor and she gets kind of attacked and verbally um, uh, put on the spot by a right-wing pundit who is kind of from uh, like a fox <laughs> uh, and he uh, really gets uh, attacks her over the film The Birth of a Nation and it talks about race, it talks about sex, it talks about politics, which, um, and it's been a struggle getting it done. But anyway, she loves film quotes. So I wanted to ask everyone who saw the film for the first time a question. If someone answers the question, I'll give them a, we have a little IRT pin and a card. So, <laughs> so um, when uh, uh, Gerard asked Ebony, he says, what does Tyrone have that I don't have? <laughs> <laughs> and this is the button. It's like, um, as I said, we don't have metro, we have metro cards now. So this is like a button that, but token. <laughs> and what, um, okay, we, uh, okay, what does Denise, Denisha's daughter's name is? Alania, what does that mean in Europe? Okay. 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 Um, so, um, this question kind of came to me and it's a little deep, but we said that we would want to ask it. It's just, the question is like, who adores us as black women? Mm -hmm. Um, so much to put us, place us on a pedestal on screen. And is it only other black women? Because, you know, a lot of times when we critique, um, the films made by African American males, there are some sexism there. Um, there are some issues with the women. So it seems to me that the Hollywood gaze is very comfortable with women who are broken and battered and bruised. And you look at the archetypes, it's like Miss Seely and Precious and, um, you know, Nappy White, who is okay, but, you know. Um, but where, like, the beautiful black women who are complex and they're on films, it's like, who adores us? Is it only black women that are able to make films that adore black, other black women, do you think that's the case? Well, you know, it's interesting because like I said, it's really 
um, I look at some of the, even um, people say, well, what happened after? Are complex and who are fun and who are <coughs> it's beautiful and, and not just the stereotype and that's what's been hard to get those films financed. It's interesting. Mm. I mean, it's the lead character who has complexity. Uh, so, so can you just take us to like a meeting? I mean, what is it? They're just like, I don't like this. I don't think it's gonna work. Like, what does that sound like? I'm just curious. It's like the whole evolutionary process. Like when I first finished IRT. There wasn't, um, Halle Berry was just coming on the scene. She just finished like ju uh, Jungle Fever. And so when I came with my script, my script that um, was called Royalty Living in Blues, which I still would love to oh, make, yeah. about a woman hip hop executive, huh. um, they were saying that there was, the executives and the agents were saying that there's no bankable star. No green, no, no black woman to green light. Who's bankable? So, right. So that's their keywords. So, and you look, and we still sort of don't have one. I was just about to say. That. So, so whatever. Maybe Carrie Washington. But, 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 but no, my old manager said there's there's um there's people who say no in different ways. No is no. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they don't use an excuse for anything just to say no to block you. You know what I mean? So they go, oh well, you know we only do movies for one million now. You know whatever the they right. they what no is no. Mm -hmm. You know so if you understand. It's, it's not something that they're readily able to do. If you if you got somebody who read a uh, red tail, mm -hmm. it took him forever to do that. Yeah. And this is Star Wars guy, you know. Yeah, and right, this yeah. is men, right. you know what I mean. So when you talk about when you talk about black and you start to dissect it to black men and black women, so we're always here. But you then, understand? You know, let me just interject on this. Even with red tail, where were the women? If you see a lot of the films that deal with World War II, and I'm a very much a film buff, okay, uh, best years of our lives, or, I mean, you could go down the list of films that deal with white males in World War II. There's always a female. There's always the girlfriend. Who's or the strong, mother, who's holding it down. Or someone in there, but if you read tales, you didn't even see a black woman in the movie. Italian woman. Yeah, Italian woman. But I mean, you didn't see the mother, you didn't see the, 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 the um, you know, the soldier's mothers or girlfriends or anything like that. So that, you know, you were talking about adorn, like who adores us, who adores black women. Well, we're not being seen on screen like that, and that's a problem, you know. And I think that. Fast forward, things did get better. We have Queen Latifah, we have other Jada Pinkett, we do have other actresses that have come since then. But it's been a struggle and it's a historic, it's an evolution that we get, I guess it's getting better little by little.